Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, we are so honored to have this young man who is taking the country by storm with his choir, Zion Movement. And if you see this choir, you will see why it says Zion Movement. If you haven't ate your Wheaties and if you haven't drunk your Gatorade. If you don't got you, on yellow shorts. If you ain't got on yellow shorts, <laughs> you, 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 you just can't hang with them. But we're so <laughs> glad to have him. We've waited for a while, and now he is here. Ladies and gentlemen, the one and only Dexter Walker from Chicago, Illinois. Welcome to the Wake Up Morning Show. Hey, guys. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it, and I really feel welcome. Thank you. Well, you know, I'm just going to start off. You know, it must be a, a hot, hot day in uh in Chicago, it must be like 59 degrees, you know. Uh, yeah, cause, cause, look, I'm, I'm just saying because you know, in Chicago, you know, 59 degrees to us is a is a, a cold front. Oh, to say you know, yes, sir. But for, for Chicago, they be like, oh, that's a balmy summer day. Right. <laughs> so, so let me ask you a question. Yeah, it's 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 about that right now, though. Actually. Okay, so let me just ask you this question, man. Chicago, you 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 in Chi Town? Um, yes, sir. All the. Well, y'all you, got movies made about you, TV shows made about you. But I got this one question that I want to ask you, and I want you to really think about this. Okay. When are they going to make a movie or a sitcom about gospel music and choirs out of Chicago? Mm. You said what I think about no, it? No, when, when, when are they going to do it? Because y'all y'all the choir mecca. Yeah, that's the truth. I have uh, I have no idea, but I, I really think that would be a, a great a great idea. I really do. Well, I want you. you, you I want you now. I'm, I'm gonna give you a charge, and I want you to talk to all the choirs and everything, and say we're gonna shut Chicago down until they make a movie about the choirs. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Trying to and, start and, something. And, and see, see the <laughs> thing about it is, is that y'all got so much anointing in the choir realm. You know what I'm saying? That I believe that if y'all got together, if, if it said we're two or three, if two or three y'all get together and took it to the network. With, with just the history of the movement of choirs, of choirs, man, I tell you, I think we would get a movie second to none. Mm. And just think about it. It would involve fashion. It would involve production. It would involve food. It, man, it'd be <laughs> second to none. And I would go see it. I would too. I would, I would too. All right. So, man, tell us, who who are you? Give us a little bit of background. Who, who your you mama been? is. Man, my name is uh, Dexter Walker. I've been around now uh, as far as the music industry for uh, 20 years. My choir made 20 years this past May. And uh, I started off, I was, a, of course, a young man. Uh, wasn't trying to start a choir, just to start another choir. Because, you know, in Chicago, we have plenty. Yes. But this was supposed to be, uh, this is a vision that God gave me, uh, a vision for young people. Uh, to uh, have a place to call their own uh, for other people, for uh, older people uh, to be able to praise God and young people to be able to praise God in such a way where they're not uh, talked about and, and all that stuff. God told me to look for the misfits, if you will, or people who have been uh, put on the back burner for different reasons. Those are the people that... Um, that my ministry consisted of. So uh, about 20 years ago, uh, we started in my grandmother's basement uh, with about 21 singers. And then it just grew from there. Uh, I knew that God's hand was on it and uh, it just, it just took off. I mean, we've had, you know, our issues and problems and stuff like that, but God's hand has never left yeah. Zion movement. Yes. Well, I tell you, uh, basement ministry is a blessed ministry. You got good acoustics down there, and and, yeah. and basically, uh, you can make it where it is uh, uh, nobody can steal what you can because it's almost soundproof down there in the basement. <laughs> now, now, tell me, tell me, was there ever a time that you could not have choir rehearsal because the basement had flooded? No, because no, not really. Because soon after we started rehearsing at a church, so we never really had a. A flooding problem. Thank okay. God. Just a flood of the Holy Ghost. Yeah. So that, that's about it. So <laughs> tell me about, you know, I always got to ask this question because, you know, when you get a whole bunch of folks together, you get all these varying personalities and the choir director has to be uh father, cousin, uncle, pastor, counselor. counselor, 
you know, defender of right and wrong. How have you balanced this off for the last 20 years? Uh, I mean, at times it's been, you know, difficult because people are people, but uh, a lot of people ask me this and I just say that I'm, I, I'm called to it. And when you're called, when you're chosen uh, for a specific task, God will give you everything uh, that you need to get the job done. Mm -hmm. uh, have I been a, a perfect leader? No. Uh, but, you know, God has had his hand on me and I've been able to, especially dealing with people, um, you know, because people don't always get along, you That's know. Right. But uh, I try to create a family uh, type of uh, atmosphere, environment, and just, you know, preach love and, you know, preach by example, you know, as well. And that is, that's really helped. And of course, prayer, right. you know, prayer is key. Prayer is key. Now, now I, I just got one more question um, in, in this whole thing. Um, when y'all break bread as a choir, what's on the table? When we break bread as a choir, what's on the table? Um you try to be funny? <laughs> no, I, I, I'm what's on the table. You know, you're from Chicago, so everybody going to think it's Chicago deep dish. But what, what what's and, on the uh, table when y'all when y'all get together and break bread? Uh, first of all, chicken. We you got to have your, okay. You got to have your fried chicken, yeah. uh, lasagna, uh, dressing, turkey, some of some of everything. Right. Okay, some okay. of everything is on that table. Right. Okay, because, you know, one of the things about it is that one of the things that we have seen over the years, because uh, we've both traveled since the kids, is that it's no matter how bad the situation gets, when it comes down to breaking bread, uh, uh, there's somebody, there's somebody mama that's going to make that chicken in the foil <laughs> with some white bread and, and oh, a piece yeah. of pound cake. And spaghetti, too. Yeah, and spaghetti. Oh. And make everything all right. <laughs> yeah, my grandma, she used to make the pound cake. She's passed on now, but... uh. We all design movement misses her ca a pound cake. Amen, amen. Now, my question to you is, if you weren't doing the music thing, what would you be doing? Wow. Um, maybe in counseling. Um, yeah, humans, human services. What you do now? Yeah. Is, is right now, well, I, actually, I was in uh, a HR, human resources. Yeah. And you, and you do it with your choir members. Yeah. It's like a second, it's like a second nature thing. Um, one thing I like about you is a couple years ago, you did something on Instagram where you paid homage to the other choir directors across the country. It really impressed me because it showed your humility and how you appreciate others. Many times we don't appreciate others. Let's talk about that because you had a Sandy Egan on there by the name of Eddie Boutra. Well, um, I feel like just being a blessing to others is is very important. Um, you know, especially choirs. Again, we are put on the back burner. We are not celebrated. Choir directors, to me, are not celebrated in the way uh, that they should. And uh, that was just my way of uh, celebrating them. And we we should do this. We should do this a lot. Yeah. We should support one another, which uh, helps. Uh, you know, gives example to other people to want to support others you know and do the same thing so it's yeah it was very important for me to do that yeah this this very past commendable. this past year we lost one of our great directors in the um uh sense of eddie ball trip i'm uh, not eddie ball trip but eddie barnes eddie barnes uh, eddie barnes he was over our choir um and that's where we learned how to tour and Eddie Barnes would uh he would work out the choir and that was back in the day where you'd had to march in and you just didn't walk in Thank side God to side, but you you, you <laughs> marched in and you had a little a little swag to it because you was a touring choir. So every year you would go to choir days at different churches and different cities and things of that nature. And um, I I asked the question because we I don't know if you remember when you had to do the the road ministry. Oh, yeah, we still do the road ministry. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you for preserving that. That's very, very important. So I'm going to ask the question because, see, this is this, you know, I know the robes are now coming with different materials and everything else. But the one thing that we, we I think almost like every five years, we would have to get new robes because at a certain point, the robe could not be cleaned anymore to get rid of the sweat smell. 
Oh my! How, how do you? How do you? Because we we used to have to clean the robes every week. They had to go to the cleaners. How do you, uh, you in this day preserve uh, the 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 longevity of robes? Well, um, in my choir, everyone is responsible uh, to pay for their robe uh, to get it clean. Um, I give them enough time. Uh, as far as engagements, if we wear choir robes to get them clean. And I, 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 you know, mentioned to them that, you know, the choir robe is, is a, it's sacred. I mean, you're, you're singing in it to uh, minister the gospel. So you have to take care, like you would take care of your clothes or you should take care of your clothes or your personal belongings. You should take care of your choir robe. So that's been very important. We never really had uh, any issues. Maybe every now and then some, someone may come. Uh, wrinkle, you know, and I ha may have to hide them or something like that. But right. other than that, we've never really had, you know, any, any issues because they feel that wearing a robe is important as well yes. to take care of. Now, growing up in Chicago, like we said, the hub of choirs, the Tommies, um, um, Chicago Mass, um, Joshua's Troop, New Direction, how was it coming up in in that atmosphere? Did you start in the community choir yourself and then transition into your own ministry? Walk me through that. So um, I feel like I caught the tail end of the choir era, the heavy choir era in Chicago, uh, which was like 80s, 90s. Then when I was coming up and started my choir, choirs had kind of died out. Um, so, I mean, I got a chance to uh, hear the old school, if you will, and then the, the new school uh, type of choirs. And we are, my choir is like a fusion, you know, of both. And uh, it was just a blessing to see all of those choirs that you named, including the Tommies, uh, Ricky Dillard, uh, just so many Chicago Mass, uh, just so many. It's, it was a, a blessing uh, to see all those choirs. And uh, Chicago had we had many, many, many choirs. It's not so much anymore, mm -hmm. but we had a whole lot of them uh, at the time. And it was uh, it was awesome to see and awesome to hear because we really didn't have any bad sounding choirs mm -hmm. here. Not even your church <laughs> choirs. Even your church yep. choirs are recording artists. So, so yep. I, got, I got this True. question that just, you know, this it ain't a rumor. I just wanted to find out. Um, when you was growing up, uh, uh, did you have hands? Could fight. Uh, uh, <laughs> well, you know what? Um, I had uncles, you know, that would, you know, tell me protect myself and stuff. I never really, well, you know, when I was in grade school, I had, a, you know, a few fights. Mm -hmm. But never, it was never, you know, intense or in a, in a, a situation uh, you, it wasn't. It wasn't a really bad situation. Okay. Just, okay. Right, but you know, yeah, I always, I always have to ask because you know sometimes choir directors, you know, uh, they pass, they 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 be up there and and they be swinging and directing. I'm like, said, wait a minute, that look like a hit move, you know? But <laughs> <laughs> Jesus is his protection. Praise God. Right. Okay, Jesus right. is his help. Right. Praise right. the Lord. So, what are some of the things you have coming up? What are some of your your visions for the choir? Well, uh, one of my uh, visions for right now is to uh, we're going to be partnering uh, with uh, some type of charitable organization or a church, at least uh, two for the upcoming holiday season uh, to be a blessing to the church or what, whatever they you know want to do. We want to be a blessing and help help them as well. Uh, right now, we are currently last night. Uh, I had a, a one of my final studio sessions. We are continuing to finish. This project is going to be called Impact, and yeah, it's, it's about time. I'm very excited about it, but it's hard work, especially when you're not backed by a label Come and on. all this. It's a lot more that you have to do, you know. That's right. But so working on that and then just uh, continuing to, um, we haven't traveled as much uh, more recently, but we are going to get back out on the road and do what we've been called uh, to do. Now, now, I want to recommend a charity f um, for you. It's called Help a Brother Out. Oh God! Uh, Help a Brother Out in San Diego Charity. Oh God! And um, you know, we 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 are five hundred one. See you, Jesus. Uh, uh, oh. where, where 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 the blessings will be. We will we'll pray for you. <laughs> 
Jesus is your help. <laughs> man, man uh, uh, it's always good, you know, um, uh, to to work with charities because it's always good to have something that you're sowing into yes. yourself. It's always like it's more blessed to give to than to receive. But those charitable people uh, that you are supporting and helping, be it giving away or whatever, they never forget it. They never be forget it. And they become the ones that will support you um, um, at your highest and at your lowest because they become like those super fans. Tell me, how are you nurturing, growing your fan base and your support base? Um, through right, right now through social media. Um, social media has been a blessing to us. Even the I remember the you remember MySpace in yeah. the early days that, of that was before uh, my time. And uh, <laughs> please. We post content on there, and not just uh, content about the choir, but just uh, spiritual content to to help people throughout the week, and that's really it's, it's really helped, you know, too. And not not just to try to grow a fan base, but you know, it's it's all about uh, to men. The gospel is is the good news of Jesus Christ. It's all about ministry. ministry. It's all about and encouraging, uplifting other people. So. Uh, that's what we've been doing. That's what I've been doing uh, for the longest of time, and I will continue. And that has really helped grow uh, the fan base as well. That's how I heard about you all through through social media, and it grabbed my attention. From you were wise in doing your rehearsals because it made us feel like we were there. And when the spirit would hit, it would hit us even at home or wherever we were. Because your because your, your rehearsals don't just be rehearsals. Your rehearsals remind me of my Kojic choir rehearsals where the spirit of God came in and it turned into a service and not what you would call a rehearsal. Yeah, it's just, it's awesome. Yeah. I just, I heard about you cause I like the name Dexter. I'm like, who <laughs> Dexter? You know, you got Dexter Walker, you know, that, that just sounds like it's going to be something good. You yes. know what I'm saying? Dexter Walker. Then he said, Zion Movement. Zion I'm like, Movement. I'm like saying. And when you see them moving yeah. and singing. I said, can they dance? Uh, and then, so then we had to go check that come out. Come on. And so I'm like, okay, that's, that's, that's good. That's good. It's, it's good. Yeah, because <laughs> choirs, he reminds me of Keith Pringle and Pentecostal Community Choir back in the day where they would sing and move. Mm -hmm. You got to have a special anointing to be able to do both because it's enough in breathing correctly, but to move with it. That means you're training them. So we thank God that you are a drill sergeant in your own rights. Thank you. So, so, so let me ask you this question because, you know, personally, there's a choir in San Diego. You paid homage to him, uh, uh, Eddie Baltrip in fulfillment. And one day somebody said, hey, Lynn, you should go to the rehearsal. You know what I'm saying? Because, see, I, I'm, I'm a good blender. I'm not a lead. You're you a, you a musician. But, but, but I'm a good blender and I can play. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Right. But I wasn't going for either one. That I was just going just to check out this choir. And I went into rehearsal. First of all, <laughs> the heat, the heat from the place that they at were the YWCA. at the YWCA, yes, the heat was coming through the door. No ventilation. And, and, and it was like, oh, my Jesus, it's hot up in there. <laughs> it was a nice temperature outside. But the, when you went to the door, the heat just hit you all up in your face. Yes. And so I, I get in there, and he got the folks running around the room singing. And I'm like, what in the jazz of size is this? <laughs> and, and I mean, when I tell you, he would work them young folks yes, out to would. the point. I'm like sitting up there like, oh, this is not a ministry for me. We would have rehearsals yeah, yeah. till 11 o'clock at yeah, night. It was not a ministry for yeah. me. I prayed for them and said, God, be for you. And, but <laughs> uh, it was not a ministry for me. So I'm going to ask you the question. Uh, uh, do you work your, your, your singers out like that? You got them running around? Yes. Uh, sometimes we run in place while we're singing. Um, back in the day when we first started, I would even have my choir singing uh, face down uh, on on the floor, face up on the floor. Uh, we, we've done a whole, whole lot of stuff like that. Yeah. And I think it's important because when I watch Making the Band with P. Diddy, he had his artists run and sing and Destiny's Child in earlier days, Mr. Knowles trained them because what you're doing mm -hmm. is you're training your, your, your core and core is where your singing comes out of your diaphragm. Mm -hmm. So if you can make right. that strong, you won't worry about coming from the voice. You'll come from here, from breathing. So yeah. I think that's that's very, 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 very important. So, and I think church choirs need to go to more workshops because back in the day you had more church choirs that were skilled like right. a community choir, and now they've kind of just anybody can go to the choir. And I think we've lost the standards of of a quality um, music department, if you will. 
doctor. Right. Well, with that being said, you know, I want to let you know that um, um, I'm stronger and I'm wiser now. Because? And, and, and let, me, let me finish. You know, I'm quoting a scripture, I mean, a, a song lyric. Uh -huh. uh, and, and because of that, you know, when auditions come up uh, uh, in, for your group. You'll pray for to, them. The, 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 stop interrupting me. Gotcha. Just know that I will continue to lift you up in prayer. There you go. And I will come and visit. You got to know your place in you God. You know, and, and I will even preach a word. Yes. But I will not audition for the, the, the Zion movement workout Pilates. I have one more question. <laughs> My last question is, how do you um, handle being an independent artist? Because the good thing is you own your own masters, but the work comes in because you don't have the wheel behind you. How do you handle that going into this your professional artistry? Well... We handle it. I, I handle it uh, again. As it's, it's a little harder. Uh, you don't have the financial, you know, backing. Um, everything that we've ever done has come either out of my pocket or through dues, mm -hmm. uh, assessments mm -hmm. for, you know, recordings and all of that. So sometimes, you know, people, you know, be like, okay, when you guys gonna put something out? Mm -hmm. You know what? It, it takes money, but uh, we we've done it for years, and we now we've had uh, about four. Uh, projects and we've done it all you know on our own and you know with the help of our supporters as well uh but uh we're 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 getting it done we're getting it done i, I commend you because it, it's tough being an uh, independent artist but the rewards is that you'll have you'll be able to put your own greatest hits out and, and, and it won't right. be a, a record label doing it because people don't understand they see the glitz and glamour and they see the traveling that has to come out of somebody's budget when you're signed to a label so if you're making this bill, mm -hmm. somebody has to pay it. Yeah, right. But also realize that, you know, as a record executive, yes. you know, there's partnership deals or distribution deals. There are all kinds of ways to go about it. Mm -hmm. And so I always tell people, uh, a lot of people like, you know, will say, well, labels this, labels that. It just depends on what label you're working with mm -hmm. and also the deal that you have on the table. Mm -hmm. Right. You know, on the Band-Aid record label, it's a 50-50 deal. For every dollar I spend, you spend a dollar. And so it's just, and for every dollar that's made, you know, we make it together. So, But you that's what I call that marriage because then you're working together as a collaborative effort. Mm -hmm. And and then, you know, record labels have to continue to teach artists how to maintain masters, how to maintain branding, and don't give everything away because there are a lot of great deals out there but but the artists have given away so much. Right. You know what I'm saying? They done made a deal with this person, this person. Mm -hmm. And and so what looks like a record label deal is know the artist tacking on to more and more and more. Right. So I encourage you to continue uh, to remain independent. Oh, yes. But knowing that uh, there are people out there that will come alongside you and and and, and be a help mate instead of a, a eat your food person. Right. <laughs> Amen. Because we coop. Recouping Damn. is something. Hallelujah. Yes, yes, yes. I, I, I got to figure that whole thing out. Because my artists, I never recoup from them. I just give, give, give because I love them. Well, we're going to pray that God will change yeah. your situation because it well, should but be. But the Lord keep on blessing. He does, but he still he can bless even more. Hallelujah. <laughs> <laughs> With that being said, brother, introduce this new song called Witness. Yes, uh, Witness uh, was just released uh, about a month or two ago. It is featuring Pastor Angela Spivy. She is yeah. no secret uh, to gospel. Uh, enjoy Witness, Dexter Walker and Zion Movement featuring Pastor Angela Spivy. And how can they find you? You can find us on anywhere on social media. You can find our music anywhere where digital music is sold. Type in Dexter Walker, Dexter Walker and Zion Movement. I guarantee you're going to find us. YouTube, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, you're going to find us. And last but not least, where's the best deep mix pizza in Chicago? Oh, wow. I would have to say a place called Barocco's. Barocco's. I heard that. You have? Yep. And ladies and gentlemen, if you don't know who Angela Spivy is, just do your research. We call her the Gospel Patty LaBelle. Or uh, Tina Turner. Or Tina Turner. Yes, sir. Right. Yes. All these sec I mean, all these uh uh secular artists. 
that yeah. came out that came out the church. Hallelujah. I just say she's Angela. Yes, <laughs> yes, sir. Since you since you've been deep and spooky this yes. morning, praise right. him. Woo-hoo. Hallelujah. This is another the Dexter Walker and Zion <laughs> movement. The song is called Witness right here on GOD Radio One dot com. Yeah.